Hi, and today we're doing the South Bay of Scarborough. Last week we did North Bay and we thought we'd do a review of the South Bay, but more of a slightly different format to what we did last year during the summer. Obviously, middle of February, as you can tell by the t-shirt, it's not exactly cold. And in fact, I'll be putting my sunglasses on later. It's that bright. But we're right now, we stood at the top next to the castle walls, looking down on Scarborough itself. I can't show you it very well because the sun is blasting right in my eyes. So come on, let's go have a look and see what Scarborough is about the South Bay during the winter months. So what we're going to do with this video is, once I've got down from the top of the castle, is to have a look at some of the shops as we walk by, as you would do if you were walking down the street itself, but also to go just a little bit off the beaten track and look at one or two things that perhaps you wouldn't notice or be aware of when you come to Scarborough, to the South Bay. There's lots of fascinating bits and pieces that whether you've been once or a hundred times, you've probably missed. So I'm hoping to just pop one or two places that you might want to visit on your next trip. And if you're just watching it to see what Scarborough's are like, you may find there's more to it than meets the eye. So let's get down these horrendous stairs. And I tell you what, if you've got asthma, take time getting up it. It is well, you can guess. So what we're going to do now, we're actually going from uh, the castle end to the very other end of the bay. But I thought I'd just stop and give you a quick look at these shells because Scarborough has a long history of fishing for fish with shells. So although this still probably imports half of them or buys them from elsewhere, the history of Scarborough has a lot to do with shells itself. And there, when it's open in the summer, is Scarborough Fair, or the fun fair really. Ten, twenty feet away from where we were a moment ago, and you go behind the main street in Scarborough, and you're entering the old Scarborough, where it was a fishing place. The buildings are, well, what you'd expect. A lot of them now are garages for flats and whatnot, but there would have been where the fish would have come in, where it had been sold. And on the seafront, just around this corner, if you can actually see through the sun, just around the corner is where the Scarborough Fair would have been. And the Scarborough Fair was basically like a marketplace. Scarborough has hundreds of these hook games, and they're only 20p a go, but you do need cash. I mean, obviously, most of these places have cash machines inside nowadays, but... 90% of the toys, the games, the amusements, you need cash for. There are some fancier restaurants, if you like, not just fish and chip shops, but uh, many of them are shut at this time of the year because they don't expect enough revenue. As we walk past even more grab machines, and there are tons of them, you'll see a little phone box. 
do not miss this phone box because it's one of the most interesting places in Scarborough, especially if you like history. You simply go in and you've got the whole of Scarborough history in audio right in front of you. And that's right on the seafront. And everybody just walks past it, not realising what they've got right next to them. And then you come across shops like this. This is your typical British seaside resort shop. Selling everything under the sun, most of which you'll never use after you go back home. But at prices you think, well, actually, I might just try one. And that's sort of price that you can expect to pay for a meal in one of these type of restaurant type places. And this is my favourite shop, or near enough, in Scarborough. It's one of those shops that you go in and you never know quite what you're going to find. And you know, you can end up coming out smiling. They have a bit of everything, they really do. If you look carefully, you might come across a Time Lord or two in the window. Have a look, see if you can see it. Plenty of nodding heads, the odd uh, Star Wars character appearing, if you're into skulls. Just seems to have a bit of everything, doesn't it? And when you go in, the amount of stuff in this... Put it this way. One of my favourite shops. You see, I did say that the Time Lord would be there. Well, his TARDIS is anyway. And now for something that's one of the oldest buildings in the whole of Scarborough. And it's right on the seafront. And if you can read it there, pause it if you, you want to. This building has been here since the 1200s. Which, when you think it's on the seafront, the amount of battering of the sea air and spray and whatnot makes you wonder how well they built it in those days. Right, just up here you'll see a couple of fish and chip places. They are there for tourists. Not the best in the world, not the worst either. But during the summer months, this is where all the seagulls will be. Personally, we've tried them there before, we'll go back. Because it's a much better place further up. And there's one of my favourite types of places, an ice cream place. Just doesn't have any prices on. Always makes me worried, does that? And this, the John Bull shop, is probably the best way to get your rock from for Scarborough. Rock, fudge, that sort of stuff. The buckets and spades, I have no idea. We usually take our own. <laughs> right, we've got a few steps further on. And just round this corner, is where most of my memories of Scarborough are, ignoring the beach itself. And a lot of them have to do with that shop on the corner. I'm going to show you one or two other weird or unusual shops just round here. It's one of those places that you'll see people go down, but you won't know why. And to begin with, you probably think, why should I bother? but it's worth a little walk, as you'll see in a minute. What I always try to do on these videos is give a bit of information if you're going to travel there, and parking charges. The same across the whole of Scarborough, apart from the Bay Area between South and North Bay during the 31st of October to the 1st of March. 
apart from that, that surprise as you're going to see. Right, that shop there, the joke shop. Every trip to Scarborough, when I was young, would go there. Now, bearing in mind I'm not exactly uh, young now, that shop has not changed in one little bit since the first day that I remember going in it. Yeah, there might be different gags and things like that. But it's one of those that brings back those childish memories. Now, I've left Lola in there because she won't be interested in this. Because up here are the more unusual shops. So we're just going to poke ahead at a few of them. Some of them are shut, purely because it's winter, and they're not going to get the tourists go up here as much as you would do down there. But there's some shops up here that are just that little bit different. I have absolutely no idea what that building over there is. Looks fantastic, should be renovated, but if you do know, put it in the comments, because I really just can't work it out. This is fantastic if you like model boats. It's got paintings of boats, ships that it's built, ships in bottles, every type of boat you can think of. I've never seen a shop like that in my life. Not something you see in the UK and not something I really would ever want to go in. I mean, they've even got red squirrels there, which are rare now. I'm sure that it's all been done legally, but not for me, thanks. Retro album shop. Perhaps you need a leather jacket. I'm not saying that they're necessarily new ones, but some of the stuff in there is. If you're into anything maritime, this shop is a visit and a half. Literally, it's a, I would say, yes, it's a shop, but it's as much a museum as anything else. The amount of stuff they've got in there. And then you've got your model railway. You used to have one of those as a kid. Nobody has them anymore. Now that game could be interesting. Knight Rider versus Back to the Future. The DeLorean, a few extra cars there that uh, not necessarily what you'd normally find knocking about. I'll have to have another look in that. Oh, ch -ch 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 bang bang, the yellow submarine. Look, there's even uh, only fools and horses. They're reliant Robin Van. Now this fish and chip shop used to be a news agent's and the reason I know that when I was 12, 13, something of that sort of age I uh, came on a holiday here and bought a joke book and I came back to this place to buy another joke book called Rugby Jokes and what Rugby Jokes did next and I think I got more Rugby Jokes. There's one that I've never been able to get hold of, one joke that's in one of them somewhere, which is the 12 days of Christmas. If anybody's got that, send us a script of it. 
fantastic at Christmas. It's hilarious. And you can see we've walked quite a fair distance down the seafront from here. And if it weren't for those buildings, it'd be a fantastic view. To the, back to the joke shop to pick up my daughter, I think. Can't leave her in there all day. Although as a 12, 13 year old, I'd have probably enjoyed every minute of that. So back to the seafront now to discover a few more hidden places that you'll have walked past if you've ever been to Scarborough. And of course, some nice donuts. What you will see dotted down each alleyway is a lot of steps going back up to that level that we was at not so long back. And now we're coming up to the best chip shop, in my mind, in Scarborough. And it's Papa's. Yep, Papa's that you've seen in Whitby is in Scarborough. And I don't think they have the best chips. And there are one or two uh, spooky places next door. There's somewhere quite famous up here. Can you see him? From the films? Yes, from the film Big. Zoltar. No, he's not speaking today. See more steps hiding all the way up there. So let's go up here and just see where they lead for another hidden little place to go to. I don't know if you want to count the steps, but it certainly left us out of breath climbing up these. That's why I've speeded it up. And there's lots of these through Scarborough. To the areas that most people don't go. If you noticed, both of these buildings here are curved. On along a street that's pretty much straight. You can tell that they weren't built recently, can't you? But that's not what I'm trying to show you up here. By going up here, you come to this large building. We're coming up to the Market Hall, which has actually been here since 1845 and is actually a listed building, a Grade 2 listed building, which basically means they can't knock it down anyway. But look at the size of the doors there. They are huge. In the 1800s, they must have had giants living there. To give you an idea of the size of those doors, you could have had two people, one stood on top of the other's shoulders and still had headroom. The place actually went through some major refurbishment in 2018 and it's now actually got three floors we've got shops cafes stalls and if we go around the corner you'll see that there's another section and it's called the vaults 
The vaults are basically full of antiques, curios, things like hidden treasures almost. Well worth a visit just for those alone. It's closed today, but uh, well worth a visit if you're spending any time in the Scarborough area. just a bit further back towards the stairs a little bit you've got this fantastic view and if you look over there you can see another building sort of bended out a little bit there are loads of little buildings dotted about just behind the main area. I like that sign there, New Steps. I think there might have been New Steps a couple of hundred years ago. So here we are, back at the seafront again. Seems such a different world from just up those steps. And yet another Zoltar. Still not speaking to us. Oh well. And if you look carefully, more hook machines. If you just look in the distance, there's the Grand Hotel, which if you watch my other Scarborough video for the South Bay, it'll tell you a lot about that. But as we cross the road here, there is something big missing from last year. Yeah. There was a big wheel here and it's vanished. I have no idea if it's coming back for the summer months, but it's been there for a couple of years now. So where it's gone, I don't know. As we walk up towards the Grand Hotel, you'll notice this park at the side. And this is modernised, but it was something that was a very Victorian idea to have little parks there for you to have a look round. But they've maintained it, updated it a few times, repaired it as time goes on. And it's a nice cool place to just sit down if you want to have a look at the beach and just relax for a bit. These little areas here with the seats and the place at the top, again, back from the Victorian times, probably at the time of the building of the Grand, somewhere so you could sit down and just look out at the sea. Quick tip if you want to go to the toilet, it's 40p there. And if you go in the uh, place next door to it, with all the slot machines, it's 20p. And here comes the Grand. It is impressive. If you don't know about it, as I say, watch that video, it'll tell you a lot about it. There's not much beach left at the moment. High tide definitely in. 
And we've still got a little bit to go yet. This could be fun. Now we're heading to probably the most unknown area that a lot of visitors pass through. And this area here, you can actually go straight from a car park, down an alleyway, past a cafe, onto the beach. Great idea. But that's not the history of it. Because behind these walls was one of the very first sea life centres, or aquariums, if you like, from the Victorian times. I'm going to show you it in a minute. Now, if you do decide to go by the seaside, this isn't exactly the cheapest place to eat. If you have a look. Now, we're going into where the aquarium was. It's all been destroyed now, but look what Scarborough has done. They've brought back memories of it. Now, through those doors there, you're entering into the car park, but we're just a that big bridge. This is a roundabout that gives you access to the car park. And if we walk through here, we're actually leading into the car park itself. But this whole area was one of the biggest of its type and one of the very first aquariums. It then was changed into what was basically a theatre that could hold 10,000 people. It is amazing that they've actually gone to the point to put sort of music on in the background that gives a reminder of where it came from. As I say, nothing to see here now, but if you'd have come in the 1800s, this would have been one of the best places to visit on Scarborough itself and still worth a two minute trip. We're now walking up to one of the most important things for Scarborough's history. Can you see that little alcove right near the water's edge? And no, I'm not going down there with the sea being this high. As you walk closer, you'll see a little red tinge on the steps. That is the spa water that stained those steps even though water didn't really come out of it much now. It's not drinkable now anyway. But that was the start of Scarborough. That's what put, brought people to Scarborough, was their spa water. And then it built up from there, from a little village, due to some water in the 1700s, turning it into the resort we know now. Now that is the beginning of the spa. To me, that building there looks more like a grand train station. And it maybe was at one point. But as we walk further in, you'll see the open air theater area. You can imagine balls going on there, dances, 1920s, 1930s. Victorian times. Quite a grand place. As we go a bit further on, and the sea's getting quite high now, there is something very, very special that I'm going to show you. If you're into history, this is the first funicular cliff lift. A funicular basically means it goes up the side of a hill and it's got two carriages. This particular one opened to the public on the 1st of August 1881. The next one that actually opened didn't open until June the 28th 1884 
just down the road, a place called Saltburn by the Sea. And being honest, until we walked up here, I didn't even know it existed. If you want to read this information, just pause the video for a minute, because it's quite interesting to find out about it. There are a few, only a few, of the beach huts up here, and they're not that close to the seafront. Uh, well, maybe they're a little bit closer than I thought. Well, we did want to go as far as possible, but that sea seems to be getting fairly high, and you can see up here, it's starting to splash over the sides so let's just see uh, looking at that i think that's as far as we'll go for today there's not much further to go you can see it from here and it is just literally a walkway a promenade and that's it but those waves are getting very very close to the edge now so let's go back a bit there's a couple of other things i want to show you we are nearly there there The first one's the Clock Tower Cafe, obviously shut now, but you can imagine in the summer, great views from there. And as you walk up here, there's a play area for kids. But there's also the toilets, which can be very, very important. The only trouble is that when you get to the toilets, great views, fantastic, and then you end up with this problem. Shut. Shut. Shut and shut. Great when you just walked up all that way. And if you look there, you can see one of the railway trams for the fun, the original funicular railway. But because people want to walk around this place, they've even put a tunnel through. And finally, the spa itself. And you can walk down from the top through these grand staircases. I can imagine many a wedding has had photos on these. And then you've got the main area, the what I'd like to call the ballroom, if you like, the open air theatre part of it, just down here. In the summer, this must be an absolute fantastic venue. I'll be honest, the tendency to walk up to this end isn't that high. That's why I never knew about that funicular railway, I guess. But as you look down, you can imagine that is a fantastic venue. You've got glass protecting you from any wind and a fantastic view. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little adventure to a few different places in Scarborough, in the South Bay. Some of them I remember from my childhood, some of them I have never been. I didn't know about uh, the uh, cliff lift there. I didn't even know it existed. So that was one thing that I learned today. And I've been to Scarborough so many times. I probably have seen it, but just forgotten about it. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. You know where the subscribe button is, you know where the next video is. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.